Creep. Hello. Patsy, this is Lester. Hello, Lester. I thought it only fair to tell you I'm getting married. I think that's a very good idea, Lester. I won't do it if you don't think I should. I want you very much to get married, Lester. Can I come over tonight and talk to you about it? No, Lester. Tomorrow night? I have to get off now, Lester. Emergency Sergeant Kirshner, one moment. They were getting tired. You got them mad. You shouldn't have. Listen, they were killing you. you why, why didn't you help me? I, you could have defended me. I defended you. Don't you think you should have at least tried? I mean, people help each other all the time. Isn't that what life is all about? Look, I don't know why you want to make such a big thing out of it. Those guys in the park, they said, hey, fat face, what are you staring at? If I told them I wasn't staring at them, they would have beat me up for being a liar. And if I told them I was staring at them because I wanted to take their picture, then they'd beat me up for being a cop. So I told them I was staring at them because they looked familiar and they beat me up for being a fag. There's no way of talking someone out of beating you up if that's what he wants to do. And you, you just let them? I want to do what I want to do, lady, not what they want me to do. Listen, no, no one behaves like that. I, 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 I ought to break your neck. You should be ashamed of yourself. Listen, 
Are you really so down on people? Or are you just being fashionable? These are beautiful. Really, just beautiful. It's sort of a collage effect, isn't it? And they're all... They're all... Hmm. What do you do for pleasure? This. Oh, I don't mean work. I mean, this is important, but... Uh, I mean, if all you ever do is take pictures of... You know, this sort of picture... Well, I mean, isn't that awfully limited? For example, I do interiors. Now, I like it. I even love it, but I'd go bats if I had to go home and do interiors and go on my vacation and do interiors, and interiors was all that was ever on my mind. I mean, that's death. No wonder you're depressed. I'm not depressed. Hmm. So, this is it. This is all that you do. You don't ski? Ski? You don't play tennis? Golf? Ping pong? <laughs> Checkers? <laughs> oh, you must have some fun. <laughs> fun. Hello there. Hello there. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Talk to me, sing, do something. <laughs> you wanna drive for a while? I hate cars. You don't have to do anything you don't wanna do. Except have fun. You'll get used to it. En cada cosa que Why not? I don't feel like it. Well, I didn't mean to force myself on you. You're a terrific girl. I really mean that. I'll tell you when I feel like it. Do you know how I wake up every morning of my life? With a smile on my face. And for the rest of the day, I come up against an 
unending series of, of challenges to wipe that smile off my face. The breather calls. Ex-boyfriends call to tell me they're getting married. Someone tries to break into the apartment while I'm getting dressed. There's a drunk asleep in the elevator. Three minutes after I'm out in the street, my camel coat turns brown. The subway stalls. A man standing next to me presses his body against mine. The up elevator jams. Rumors start buzzing around the office that we're about to be automated. The down elevator jams. The air on Lexington Avenue is purple. And all the taxis are off duty. A man on the bus tries to pick me up. Another man follows me home. I walk in the door and the breather's on the phone. Isn't that enough to wipe the smile off anybody's face? Well, it doesn't wipe it off mine. Because for every bad thing, there are two good, no, four good things. There are, there are friends and a wonderful job and tennis and traveling and skiing. Staying up all night to watch the sunrise. Flying your own airplane. Horseback riding. Alfred, I think I'm falling in love with you. I said, I think I'm falling in love with you. Alfred, are you falling in love with me? I don't know what love is. Uh, do you think I'm aggressive? I don't know. Do you think I'm too aggressive? I like it. Somebody has to be aggressive. Do you like me? I think you're terrific. Are you attracted to me? Come on, Patsy. You want to make love to me? Hey, you're pretty aggressive. Oh, your life is in my hands. <laughs> I trust you. Oh, Alfred, do you really? I nearly trust you. Nearly? I nearly do. I really nearly do. Oh, Alfred! You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I want to. Are you sure you want to? No, I think I want to. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. smiling. I'll do the kitchen over in butcher board. I can get seconds on dishes in the village. Sheets and towels, Macy's or Bloomingdale's, the dining room table, chairs, dressers, a sofa. We'll go to auctions over the weekend. Broadlooms I can pick up cheap at a wholesaler's. Oh, bring your photo floods over from the studio until I find lamps. I'll have a carpenter in on Monday to put up a work area, a dark room, and you'll need your own closet. A king-size bed, Sloan's will deliver in 10 days. In two weeks, we'll get married. Oh, Alfred, I'm so happy. As good as your fag. He'll be a fine boy. I know it in my bones. What the hell is the air conditioner on for? It's 50 outside. Drowns out the traffic. Well, it's all right when we don't have guests. Come on, people to think we're crazy. Carol, you're not going to get that poor boy drunk. That poor boy wants to marry my Patsy. And don't call me Carol. I hate that name. I told you never to call me that name. You deliberately do that to annoy me. Call me dear! You're going to love them. It's not my kind of situation. I can't stand families. Now be good. I really want to go home. Shh. I really hate families. What was the name of that interior decorator she went to Europe with? Howard. He was delicate. Swish. And that actor, the one she went camping up in Maine with? Roger. He was very muscular. Swish. And the musician, and the stockbroker, and the Jewish novelist. Oh, they're not like that. Swish, 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 swish. And spot them a mile away. She draws them like flies. She's got too much stuff. Too much stuff. You'll wait. You'll see. 
This new one, what's his name? Alfred. A swish name if I ever heard one. Are you reading again? Lesbians of Venus. Is this what I spent 10,000 a year at graduate school for? Get dressed. Lost my place. Patsy, 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 Patsy. Oh, my baby girl. Hey, everybody. This is Alfred. Hey, Alfred. Oh, oh, Alfred. 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 Oh,
see, I'm not going to fall down. They get tired and they go away. It's hardly worth talking about. So much tension. Rush, rush, rush. My mother taught me to take dainty little steps. She'd kill me if she could see the stride on Patsy. Well, um, uh, tell me something. Don't you defend yourself? Well, I asked them not to hit my cameras. They're very good about that. It's surprising. Well, uh, why don't you fight back? I don't want to. Jesus Christ, you're not a pacifist. Daddy. An apathist. So you just stand there? Doesn't hurt. Getting your face beat in? Doesn't hurt. Not if you daydream. I daydream all through it about my work. I imagine myself standing there in the same spot, clicking off roll after roll of film, humming to myself with pleasure. I hum to myself when I work. There are times that I actually think I'm doing what I'm only dreaming I'm doing. Muggers tend to get very depressed when you hum all the while they're beating you up. It's not something I, I choose to do, mind you. It's one of those things you learn to live with. This guy's a riot. Well, uh, tell me, uh, how, how do you get into these things? You, you must do something to get them mad. Well, God damn it, you're getting me mad. Aren't they adorable? What did I tell you about them, hmm? Didn't I predict? I think he's very sweet. Oh, 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 that's a sure sign. You think they're all sweet. Well, I'll be damned if I let myself stand by and let a woman fight my battles for me. Oh, they don't uh, make frontier fighters uh, like my father anymore. Like, come on, come on, let me stop up here. Come on, Patsy, come on. Come on, Patsy, come on. Come on. Tiger, come Patsy, on. I don't want to hurt you. Patsy! <laughs> Patsy! <laughs> <laughs> what was my big baby girl, huh? <laughs> who, who, who? <laughs> I wish you had as much brains as you have brawn. You don't like him, do you, Daddy? I don't put words in my mouth. Well, then you do like him. What? I want to know more about him before I make up my mind. Not to like him. Now, well, don't bully me, young lady. You know I don't like you when you bully me. You love it when I bully you. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're too fast for the old man. But I know a thing or two. Never settle for less. Daddy, I'm not. Don't undersell yourself. Daddy, what have I ever understood myself? The right man will come along. Daddy, I'm 27. The right man. We're all married five years ago. You don't know what you're talking about. You're very popular. Mm, sure. When they want a woman, they can collapse without shame in front of them. They come to me. Well, why not? You're Dresden. Oh, to meet a man who is ashamed to collapse in front of me. I'm tired of being Mother Earth. Alfred's the only man I know who isn't waiting for me to save him. You know how that makes me feel? God help me, I've got to save him. Come man, get it! I always said that to my children at mealtime. I've always found it a charming family tradition. I always say, come and get it to my children. Yeah. I dream of the day when I can hear Patsy say, come and get it to her children. Kenny, come and get it. Or do you need a special invitation? In a minute. Not in a minute, young man. Right now. It's kind of uh, stuffy in here, Alfred. Do you want to open the window like a good fellow? No, dear. I asked Alfred. It's all right. It's perfectly all right. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch refused to open. I had my reasons. Well, I loosened it. It loosened it. <laughs> That's so right. <laughs> All right, smart guy. You open it. Well, come on. You're the smart one around here. Let's see you open it. I spent the whole day cooking. Can't we eat now and open and close windows later? This won't take a second. Well, are you going to try, or are you just going to sit there and laugh at the earnest efforts of your betters? Huh? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, window. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! Uh. You're not 
not so smart now, are you? <laughs> oh, you don't know what a pleasure it is to have my family all together like this. <laughs> Did you know that in last year's big power failure, some people stood in the subways in total darkness for as long as four hours without bringing their newspapers? Can you come back here? Without bringing their newspapers down from in front of their faces? It'd be nice if someone else around here would think of lighting the candles once in a while. <laughs> I'm the watchdog around here, Albert. Imagine what Patsy must have told you about me. Great soup, Mom. You're a photographer, Albert, so I thought you'd be interested in seeing these pictures of Patsy's dead brother, Steve. He looked very handsome in his swimsuit. He won five gold cups. He was four years older than Patsy. Nine years older than me. He looks very handsome in his baseball uniform. He only pitched no hitters. Thank you for letting me see them. This one was taken after he came home from the war, a hero. He looks very handsome in his uniform. What did the double bar signify? He was a captain, a hero. He bombed Korea. When his country called on him to serve again, he bombed Vietnam. A brilliant future in electronics. Not an enemy in the world. Whoever would have thought he'd be shot down in his tracks in the corner of 97th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. But I won't bore you with our tragedy. Damn it, Mother! Must we go through this every time I bring a man home for dinner? Patsy's done it again. Boy, I'd be killed if I ever talked like that. And that's for basketball, and that's for bowling, <laughs> and that's for tennis. She's as strong as an ox. When we were kids, we used to wrestle all the time. I always lost. Are you still with us? And that's me with Steve. And me. They still don't have any idea who did it, eh? Oh, it's all right. It's perfectly all right. The boys down at Homicide have worked long and hard and imaginatively on this case. Many have become close and personal friends. to take your time, Alfred. Knowing you were a photographer, I thought you'd be interested. <clears throat> exactly what sort of work do you do? Oh, it's sort of complicated. You know, you don't really want to know. You may as well. Well, I began as a commercial photographer. He began as a painter. Oh, I, I was a bad painter. Says you. Jesus Christ, will you let the boy finish? Well. I began as a commercial photographer and was doing sort of well at it sort of well you should see his portfolio he's had work in holiday esquire the new yorker vogue vogue <laughs> it's an overrated business but after a couple of years of doing sort of well at it uh, things began to go wrong i began losing my people somehow i got my heads chopped off or out of focus, or terrible expressions on my models. I'd have them examining a client's product like this, like that. <laughs> a face would be really, the agencies began to wonder if I didn't have some editorial motive in mind. 
which was not true, but once they planted the idea. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, dear. How far better it is to strike a match than curse the darkness. My mother always told us that. Go on, dear. Well, my career suffered, but there was nothing I could do about it. You see, the harder I tried to straighten out, the fuzzier my people got and the clearer my objects. Soon my people disappeared entirely. They just somehow never came out. But the objects I was shooting, brilliantly clear. So I began to do a lot of catalog work, pictures of medical instruments, things like that. It was boring, but it kept me alive. I suppose the real break came with the SCM show. They had me shoot 30 of their new models. They hired a gallery and put on a computer show. 120 color pictures of computers. It got some very strange notices, the upshot of which was that the advertising business went thing crazy and I became commercial again. You must be extremely talented. I got sick of it. Where the hell are standards? That's what I kept asking myself. I mean, those people will take anything. Hell, if I give them a picture of shit, they'd probably give me an award for it. Language, young man. So that's what I do now. What? Take pictures of shit. Language, language, this is my house. Oh, I don't mean to offend you, Mrs. Newquist. I've been shooting shit for over a year, and I've already won half dozen awards. Awards? Yeah. And Harper's Bazaar wants me to do its spring issue. Knock it off. Well, that's a very respectable publication. It all sounds very impressive. The news. Well, I have to get up early. Mm -hmm. Don't go unless you feel you must. The Weather Bureau says in the storm, she packs 75 mile an hour winds south of New Orleans. All posted in Texas, Louisiana. Profile deadline. Hello. Look. I don't know who you are, but you're not dealing with helpless women now. You people, you young people today, destroy, destroy. When are you going to find time to build? In my days, we couldn't afford telephones to breathe in. You want to get down on your hands and knees and be grateful. Why isn't anybody grateful? I don't know what to do with you. You're the toughest reclamation job I've ever had. I know. Look, maybe you should just retire on your laurels, Patsy. I mean, you've reformed five fags in a row. Why press your luck with a needle? Because you're wrong. Every age has its problems, and people somehow manage to be happy. I'm sorry, I don't mean to bully you. Yes, I do mean to bully you, Alfred. If everything is so hopeless, well, why do anything? OK. Why get married? You said you wanted to. I find this a very unpleasant conversation. Oh, come on, Patsy, let's not turn this into a critical conversation just because you're not getting your way. I'm forgetting married. Oh, thanks. Oh, so this is a critical conversation. Alfred! He doesn't know how to fight. That's why I'm not winning. Alfred! Damn it, Alfred. Aren't you willing to battle over anything, even me? There isn't much point, is there? Well, at least say you love me. I'm not sure I know what love is. OK, Buster, you've had it. I'm going to marry you, make you give me a house, entrap you into half a dozen children, and seduce you into a life so, so, oh, 
just so remorselessly satisfying that within two years, under my management, you will come to me with a camera full of baby pictures saying life can be beautiful. And ugly, more often U-G-L-Y. You're gonna give me a piano to sing around and a fireplace to lie in front of? And each and every Christmas, we are going to send out personalized Christmas cards with a group family portrait on the front, taken by Alfred Chamberlain. Mother, Daddy, Alfred and I are getting married next week. You got yourself a fine young man. And so accomplished. We'll have to let Dr. Patterson know right away. Who? The minister, Dopey. Mrs. Newquist. Mrs. Newquist, listen, when you speak to the minister, you better tell him we don't want any mention of God in the ceremony. What? I'm gonna have him arrested! No God in the ceremony, hmm? Getting a lot of turndowns, aren't you? Surprising, isn't it, how the name of God is still respected in this town? <sighs> Your father and me go back a long ways, young lady. He's done me a lot of favors. Got me tickets to shows. I'd like to help him out. My mother, thank God she's not alive today, landed in this country 65 years ago. Four infants in her arms. Kissed the sidewalk the minute she got off the boat. She was so happy to be here, to be out of Russia alive, across the ocean alive. More dead than alive if you want to know the truth. 16 days in the steerage, 15 people got consumption, five died. My father, thank God he's not alive today, came over two years earlier, 67 years ago, worked like a son of a bitch to earn our passage. Pardon my French. You don't want God in this ceremony, so you're probably familiar with it. My father worked 14 hours a day in a sweatshop on Lower Broadway, number 315. Our first apartment was a five-flight walk-up, four-and-a-half-room cold water flat with a bathtub in the kitchen and the toilet down the hall. 142 Hester Street. Three families used the toilet. An Italian family, a colored family, a Jewish family. Three families with different faiths. But one thing each of those families had in common. They had in common the sacrifices they had to make to get where they were. What they had in common was persecution! Persecution! So they weren't so glib about God. God was in my mother's every conversation. How she got her family out of Russia, thank God, in one piece. About the pogroms, the steerage, about those that didn't make it, got sick and died. Who could they ask for help? If not God, then who? The Great Society, the Department of Welfare, Travelers Aid. This city was a, a concrete jungle to the families that came here. They had to carve homes and lives out of concrete, cold concrete. You think they didn't call on God, those poor suffering greenhorns? You see the suit I'm wearing? Expensive? Custom made. My father, thank God he's not alive today, worked 16 hours a day in a shop on Broom Street. And his artistry for a tenth of what you pay today makes me cloak out of this suit. 145-147 Broom Street. So tired, so broken in spirit, that when he climbed the six flights of stairs each night to the three-room unheated flat the five of us were crowded in, 171 Attorney Street, that he did not have the strength to eat. The man did not have the strength to eat. Turning thinner and yellower by the day. For lack of what? A well-balanced diet? Too much cholesterol? Too many carbohydrates and starchy substances in his blood? Not on your sweet life. For lack of everything. What was God to my father? I'll tell you, sit down, I'm not finished. I'll tell you what God was to my father. God got my father up those six and a half flights of stairs, not counting the stoop, every night. God got my mother warm, gray from lying to her children about a better tomorrow she didn't believe in, up every morning with enough of the failing strength that finally deserted her last year at Miami Beach at the age of 91 to face another day of hopelessness and despair. 
3134 Biscayne Boulevard. God. And you tell me you don't want him in the ceremony? Look at these hands. The hands of a judge. The hands of a professional man. Not on your sweet life. The hands of a worker. I worked. These hands toil from the time I was nine. Strike that, seven. Every morning up at five. Dressing in the pitch black to run down seven flights of stairs, 13 steps of flight, I'll never forget them. To run five blocks to the Washington market, unpacking crates for 75 cents a week. A dollar if I worked on Sundays. Maybe. Where was my God then? Where? On those bitter cold mornings with my hands so blue with frostbite they looked like ladies' gloves was God? Here, in my heart, where he was, has been, and will always be till the day they carry me feet first out of this courtroom. Doc Wood, God grants it soon. My first murder trial. Where are you going? I'm not finished. You're not going to marry us. I'm not finished. Don't be a smart punk. You're an old, old wise guy punk, aren't you? I've seen your kind. You come up before me again. You were never married before? Your parents, they're alive. I think so. You think so? Where do they live? Chicago, I guess. Think, you guess. What kind of answers are these? I haven't kept up contact. They know you're getting married? Look, Alfred, Patty's mother's very upset. I'm upset. I don't say I believe in God. The question is wide open, but me, it's not a matter of belief in God. It's a matter of belief in institutions. I'm a great believer in institutions. Bitterness is a bad way to start a marriage. Patsy's not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm bitter. If you don't believe in God, why do you care if they use his name? I'm a lousy debater, Mr. Newquist. Nervous, son? Yeah. No, what? No, I'm not nervous, Mr. Newquist. Why don't you call me Dad? I didn't call my own father Dad. What did you call him? I didn't call him anything. The occasion never came up. Look, couldn't you concede me one dad? I mean, not all the time, but you know, once in a while. Hello, Dad. Hiya, Dad. Daddy. You want some tobacco, Dad? For Christ's sake, I want an answer! Never, never forgive you. Oh, 
He's a world famous photographer, you know. He does collages for Harper's Bazaar. This is Alfred. Hello. You're stealing my little girl away. I'm here. Oh, Lester. And I'm willing to forgive and forget. There are no atheists in foxholes these days, huh, Reverend? They've all gone into the ministry, huh? <laughs> Ethical culture told them they didn't have to have God in the ceremony, but they had to have ethical culture in the ceremony. Father-in-law wants me to mention the deity in the ceremony. He wants me to sneak it in. He's offered me a lot of money to do it. I don't know what to tell you, Henry. Well, if it's all right with you, I'd like to take the money and not mention the deity. First existential can use the money. I haven't made up my mind. I might go into teaching. I absolutely deplore your views, but I respect your right to have them. What I really want to do is direct films. Well, the first year, at least, we'll live at my place. I gave him $2,500. They looked everywhere. Even the state of New York had God in the ceremony. I gave them $2,500. <laughs> No, my family isn't here. I gave them $2,500. I plan to go on working into my eighth month. No, my family's not here. I gave them $2,500. <clears throat> no, my family's not here. It's wonderful to marry a tall man. So many complications when you marry a person shorter than yourself. I gave them $2,500. Bitch. All uh, right. May we proceed? May we proceed? Thanks! May we proceed? Very good. You all know why we're here. There is often so much sham about this business of marriage. Everyone accepts it, ritual. That's why I was so heartened when Alfred asked me to perform this ceremony. He has certain beliefs, which I assume you all know. He is an atheist, which is perfectly all right. Really, it is. I happen not to be. But inasmuch as this ceremony connotes an abandonment of ritual in the search for truth, I agreed to perform it. First, let me state to you, Alfred, and to you, Patricia, that of the 200 marriages that I have performed, all but seven have failed. So the odds are not good. We don't like to admit it, especially at the wedding ceremony, but it's in the back of all our minds, isn't it? How long will it last? We all think that, don't we? We don't like to bring it out in the open, but we all think that. Well, I say, why not bring it out in the open? Why does one decide to marry? Social pressure, boredom, loneliness, sexual appeasement, love? I won't put any of these reasons down. Each in its own way is adequate, each is all right. Last year, I married a musician who wanted to get married in order to stop masturbating. Please don't be startled, I'm not putting him down. That marriage did not work, but the man tried. He is now separated, still masturbating, but he is at peace with himself because he tried society's way. So you see, it was not a mistake. It turned out all right. Now, just last month, I married a novelist to a painter. Everyone at the wedding ceremony was under the influence of an hallucinogenic drug. The drug quickened our mental responses, slowed our physical responses, and the whole ceremony took two days to perform. Never have the words had such meaning. Now that marriage should last. 
Still, if it does not, well, that'll be all right. For don't you see, any step that one takes is useful, is positive, has to be positive because it's a part of life. Even the negation of the previously taken step is positive, that too is a part of life. And in this light, and only in this light, should marriage be viewed as a small, single step. If it works, fine. If it fails, fine. Look elsewhere for satisfaction. To more marriage is fine. As many as one wants, fine. To homosexuality, fine. To drug addiction, I will not put it down. Each of these is an answer for somebody. For Alfred, today's answer is Patricia. For Patricia, today's answer is Alfred. I will not put them down for that. So what I implore you both, Patricia and Alfred, to dwell on while I ask you these questions required by the state of New York to legally bind you, sinister phrase that, is that not only are the legal questions I ask you meaningless, but so too are the inner questions that you ask yourselves meaningless. Feeling one's partner does not matter. Sexual disappointment does not matter. Nothing can hurt if you do not see it as being hurtful. Nothing can destroy if you do not see it as destructive. It is all part of life, part of what we are. So now, Alfred, do you take Patricia to be your lawfully wedded wife, to love, whatever that means, to honor, to keep her in sickness and health, in prosperity and adversity? What nonsense! Forsaking all others, what a shocking invasion of privacy. Rephrase that to more sensibly say, if you choose to have affairs, then you won't feel guilty about them. As long as you both shall live, or as long as you're not tired of one another. Yeah. And Patsy, do you take Alfred to be your lawfully wedded husband to love that harmful word again? Could not one more wisely say, communicate? To honor, I suppose by that it means you won't cut his balls off, but then some men like that. To obey, well, my first glance at you told me you were not the type to obey. So I went to my thesaurus, and I came back with these alternatives. To show devotion, to be loyal, to show fealty, to answer the helm, to be pliant. General enough, I think, and still leave plenty of room to dominate. In sickness and health, and all the rest of that gobbledygook, so long as you both shall live. I do. Alfred and Patsy, I know now that whatever you do, will be all right. To Patsy's father, Carol Newquist. I've never heard that name on a man before, but I'm sure it's all right. I ask you, sir, feel no guilt over the $250 check you gave me to mention the deity in the ceremony. What you have done is all right. It's part of what you are, part of what we all are. And I beg you not to be overly perturbed when I do not mention the deity in the ceremony. Betrayal, too, is all right. It, too, is part of what we all are. And to Patsy's brother, Kenneth Newquist, with whom I had the pleasure of a private chat, I beg you feel no shame. Homosexuality Please. is all right. Really, it is. It's perfectly all right. Oh, it's all right, really, it's all right. Oh. hysterical, Daddy's collapsed, and Kenny's disappeared with my wardrobe. I hope you're satisfied with your day's work. I thought it was a very nice ceremony, a little hokey. Alfred! What's going to become of us if you go on this way? Weren't you there? I wanted a wedding. What in God's name do you use for feelings? I feel. You don't feel. Have it your way. Ah, there you go again. You won't fight. But you knew I wouldn't fight before you married me. 
way. If you don't fight, you don't feel. If you don't feel, you don't love. I don't know what love is. Where were you going? I thought it was over. I'm glad you're back, Patsy. Oh, kissing you is like kissing white bread. What is it with you, Alfred? I've never had a man do this to me before. You know, it, it isn't just pain you don't feel. You don't feel pleasure. I do feel pleasure. About what? A lot of things. Name one. My work. Oh, name another. Sleeping. Work and sleeping. Oh, that's just great. What about sex? Makes you sleep better. Alfred! Do you mean half the things you say? You must feel something. Alfred! Jesus Christ! Alfred, why did you marry me? You're comfortable. I am not comfortable! If you knew anything about me, you would know that I am not comfortable. Do you know why I married you? I'm comfortable. I married you because I wanted to mold you. I loved the man I wanted to mold you into. But you're not even there. I mean, how can I mold you when you're not there? Come back here. Alfred! Honey, I don't want to hurt you. I want to change you. I want to make you see that there is some value in life, that there is some beauty, some tenderness, some things worth reacting to, some things worth feeling. What do you want out of life? Just survival? And to take pictures. Of shit? It's not enough! Here. What's that, a summons? It's a questionnaire. Here. I'm sending you to Chicago. You're going to see your parents. Patsy. You're going to ask them these questions. These questions on this questionnaire. What do you mean? Like, was I a happy or unhappy child? That's very was good. Was I breastfed or bottle fed? Oh, excellent. What are you trying to prove? You are going to record their answers. Their answers to these questions. You're going to record every word that's said. Do you understand? And then you are going to bring the whole thing back to me in here. And we are going to learn why you are the way you are instead of the way you have to be. I'm not going. You're fighting. I'm not fighting, and I'm not going. Christ, Alfred. I want to be married to a big, strong, vital, virile, self-assured man that I can protect and take care of. Alfred, you're the first man I've ever gone to bed with where I didn't feel he was a lot more likely to get pregnant than I was. You've got to let me mold you. Please, let me mold you. Oh, you've got me begging. You've got me whining and, and begging and crying. I've never behaved like this in my life. Alfred, do you have any idea how many people in this town worship me? Maybe that's the attraction. You don't worship me. Alfred, you've got to change. Now, now I'm not saying that I'm any better or stronger than you are. It's just that we, you and I, have different temperaments. And my temperament is better and stronger than yours! You're a wall! You don't, you don't fight, you, you hardly even listen, dear God! Will somebody please explain to me why I think you're so beautiful? It's all shit. How come I never noticed before? Patsy. You were right. I'm just 
dance. I'm the one who doesn't feel. Come on, Patsy. No more reason for anything. Come on, cut it out. The only true feeling is no feeling. It's the only way to survive. You are 100% right. Hold my hand. I feel weak. Alfred, we can't both feel weak at the same time. You're beginning to get me nervous, Patsy. You're right. I'm wrong. Everything's the way you say. You sit. You get old. You die. It's Alfred. Alfred who? Alfred Chamberlain. My Alfred Chamberlain? Tom Wolf said you can't go home again. But I doubt if he meant that little to either more likely a metaphor. But he didn't come from Chicago, North Carolina, Georgia, something like that. He, Wolf wasn't a racist, though. I don't think he was. An anti Semite, I think, but not a racist. Faulkner, though. Well, the character Dilsey, brilliant, I think. But today they probably call her a handkerchief hat. Oh, here's the prodigal son. Well, what a surprise, Alfred. I mean, I wish you had told us you were coming. We, we would have invited some young people over. Hello. Hello. I must remember what you drink. Uh, a martini, isn't it? Oh, I didn't drink when I lived here. Oh, you have to have my martinis. I am the best martini maker in the Midwest. Everybody says so. Harriet and Hank and... Oh, aren't we lucky that we didn't go out tonight? I mean, there's a new David Smith show on at the museum. The young people like David Smith? Oh, we were supposed to go with Norman Eady, but uh, I was in the middle of a Vonnegut. <laughs> young people adore Vonnegut. Uh, I could still get a hold of Norm. Oh, I don't want to go. Oh, there's a Visconti movie on. And Arthur raves about it. We could go to the Late Show. Well, the, the new hopper is at the uh, Three Penny Cinema. I don't want to go to the movies. Oh, you put on some weight, Arthur. But then you were 17 when you left. Wow. What have you been up to? Well, I went to college, and now I'm a photographer. Oh, uh, Cartier, Brisson, and uh, Man Ray are the only photographers I know. I'll have to brush up. <laughs> ah. Did you like college? No. Uh, do you like photography? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's important for young people to like what they do. Also, I'm sort of married. Well, I'll be done. Peace. Brotherhood. I often wondered whether you were married or not. Doesn't Bull make a good martini? The trick is in the vermouth. Look, I don't want to take a lot of your time. Patsy, my wife, worked out a questionnaire, a series of questions about my childhood. It's supposed to help me. You see, I don't remember very much before I was 19. Well, Alfred, I don't mind answering questions. So do I. If it'll help you, but I don't know if I want to be recorded. <laughs> well, I'm preserved for posterity. I mean, do you really need that thing? We could talk much more openly without it. Oh, I need it. It'll help me. Well, Justice Holmes, I think it was, hated wiretapping. I could look that up if you like. I might forget what you say. I mean, young people are just so lazy about taking notes. Well, I have nothing to say that I mind being quoted on. It's the idea. But it's the FBI. I need it. Was I a happy or an unhappy child?
What is one to say? Well, every child has anxiety. I mean, we're just not willing to accept anxiety anymore. Uh, Freud, I think it was Freud. It's all anxiety back to the birth trauma. Frank, too. Was I breastfed or bottle fed? Sullivan. Sullivan writes about the significance of powerlessness. It's years since I've looked at Sullivan. Uh, uh, doesn't Sullivan also have something to say? Uh, it could be Adler, but I think it's Sullivan. Uh, about the dynamism of apathy. Dynamism of apathy, that's a wonderful phrase. The magical power of the cry. You see, what Sullivan is saying is that the cry brings help which leads to the correction of the condition which led to the cry. Was I difficult to toilet train? Uh, Klein. Uh, Klein speaks of the coupling of early Oedipus wishes with the fear of castration. Uh, the child's desire to possess the mother's feces. I mean, it's the anal sadistic stage. Uh, it's fake morality. Forenzi's phrase. Forenzi. Was I subject to tempered tantrums? Uh, 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 a tendency in boys to express excessive aggression. Originates in his fear of castration. And coincides with the boy's protest against the feminine role, rooted also in his dread Red of his, his mother, mother, who intends to rob of his father's penis. Was I a good or bad eater? Uh, food. I don't remember. I don't remember. Did I relate well to other children? I don't remember. I don't remember. <clears throat> when did I first exhibit signs of alienation? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. College, the government couldn't decide whether I was a security risk or not. I used to protest a little then. So they decided to put a mail check on me. Every day the mail would come later and later. Corners torn. Never sealed correctly. I was more of an activist then. So I decided to fight fire with fire. I began writing letters to the guy who was reading my mail. I addressed them to myself. But inside there went something like, Dear Sir, I'm not that different from you. All men are brothers. Tomorrow, instead of reading my mail in that dark, dusty hall, why not bring it upstairs where we can check it out together? I never got an answer. So I wrote another letter. Dear sir, there are no heroes, no villains, no good guys, no bad guys. The world's more complicated than that. Come on upstairs where we can open a couple of beers and talk it all out. Again, no answer. So I wrote, Dear Sir, I've been thinking too much of my own problems, too little of yours. Yours can't be a happy task reading another man's mail. It's dull, it's unimaginative. It's a job, and let's not mince words for a hack. Yet I wonder, can this be the way you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a hack? Do you see yourself as the office slob? Have you ever wondered why they stuck you with this particular job instead of others who have less seniority? That letter never got delivered to me. So then I wrote, Dear friend, 
Just a note to advise. You may retain my letters as long as you deem fit. Study them, reread them, think them out. Who back at the home office is out to get you? Who at this very moment is sitting at your desk, reading your mail? I don't say this to be cruel, but because I'm the only one left you can trust. No answer. But the next day, a man saying he was from the telephone company showed up. No complaint had been made to check my telephone. Shaky hands, bloodshot eyes. And as he dismembered my telephone, he said, look, what nobody understands is that everybody's got his job to do. I got my job. In this case, it's preparing telephones. I like it or I don't like it, but it's my job. If I had another job, say with the FBI or someplace putting in a wiretap, for example, or maybe even reading a guy's mail, like it or don't like it, it would be my job. Does anybody got the right to destroy a man for doing his job? I wrote one more letter expressing my deep satisfaction that we had at last made contact and informing him that the next time he came, say, to read the meter, I had valuable information. Photostats, recordings, names and dates about the conspiracy against him. That letter showed up a week after I mailed it. It was torn in half and clumsily glued together again. In the margin on the bottom in large shaky letters was written the word, please. I wasn't bothered again. It was after this that I began to wonder if that Unformidable. Why bother to fight back? It's very dangerous. It's dangerous to challenge a system unless you're completely at peace with the thought that you're not going to miss it when it collapses. Patsy, you can't be the one to change. I'm the one who has to change. Alfred, what are you talking about? When I first met you, I remember thinking to myself, this is the most formidable person I've ever met. I don't stand a chance. I'll try to stay the way I am. I'll try desperately, but I don't stand a chance. It's only a matter of time, Patsy. Very soon I'll be different. I'll be able to look at a, a half-empty glass of water and say, my God, this glass isn't half-empty. This glass is half-full. Patsy, I'm the one who has to change. You're not the one who has to change. See what happens when you start fooling around with the rules? It begins with weddings and ends with... <laughs> well, there's no telling where it ends.
There are reasons for doing things the old way. Don't look for trouble, and trouble won't look for you. I'm not saying there aren't problems, but you have to fight. You're going to fight, starting now, is that right? And you're going to feel starting right now, is that right? I don't want a nod, I want an answer. Say yes, Patsy. Yes, Patsy. Yes, Patsy what? Yes, Patsy, I'm going to feel. Starting when? Starting as soon as I can manage it. Starting when? Starting now. And what's your first feeling? Uh, it's sort of distant. Don't be ashamed of it. Worship. Of God? Of you. You're doing just fine.
silver for a bedroom? It was either silver, brown, or black. There's still not much of a selection in steel. I'll make it brown, then. Not in my bedroom. My bedroom, too. I told you I didn't want them in my room. They have to be put in every room, Kenny. It says so in the building code. They like block out all the light. What light? That's what shutters are for, dear. It's for your own good. Don't I have any rights around here? You love them when you get used to them. That noise. What a mess they make. I remember when workmen were neat, quiet, mannerly. I brought you some tea. Will you do me a favor and cut it out? I was only trying to help. Come on, Alfred. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're doing fine. Go ahead. Uh-uh. Don't gulp. Take it easy now, huh? Nice and easy, Alfred. Big deal, big deal. Big deal, big deal. Little son of a bitch. Christ, I hope it's only a phase. darkest before the dawn. Alfred, I paid an unexpected call on police headquarters this afternoon. Keep this under your hat, huh? I had a 50-minute talk with Lieutenant Practice. Busy as hell. Found 15 minutes to talk to me. He's convinced they're closing in on the conspiracy. 345 unsolved murders in six months. I feel sorry for those poor bastards. I don't understand anything anymore, Alfred. You know how I get through the day, Alfred? In planned segments. I get up in the morning and I think, okay. Sniper didn't get me for breakfast. Let's see if I can take my morning walk without being mugged. Okay, I finished my walk. Let's see if I can make it back home without getting a brick dropped on my head from the top of a building. Okay, I'm safe in the lobby. Let's see if I can make it up in the elevator without getting a knife in my ribs. Okay, I made it to the hall. Let's see if I can walk in and not find burglars in the hallway. Okay, I made it to the hall. Let's see if I can walk into my living room and not find the rest of my family dead. This goddamn city. What happened? They shot a hole in my shopping bag. You could have been killed. I get shot at every day. We all do, Harold. Don't make more of us than it is. I ran into that nice lieutenant practice in the lobby. He looks simply awful. I invited him up for coffee as soon as he finishes investigating the new murder. Who got it this time? No, I don't know. It was in the other wing. Thank God. Kenny, I've got a leaking shopping bag. You read the newspapers lately? You don't have to call anymore. Patsy's dead. Hello? I don't know what to say. I'm terribly sorry. But what can we do? The world's gone crazy. Mm hmm.
should have been a girl. Girls have it easy. They're better at studying. They're not forced to play ball. They don't have to have a job. I really could have handled it. You. And you, outside. <laughs> That's the crop, Lieutenant. Alfred, look who's decided to pay some visit. Lieutenant practice. Can I have a glass of milk, please, Mrs. Newquist? And a cookie? Of course, dear. Jesus Christ, I'm depressed. There's got to be some logical explanation of this whole business. Oh, you got nothing to be ashamed of. Don't worry, you'll figure it out. Listen, uh... I really came by to return this. I don't know what got into me this afternoon. No, it's yours. I give it to you. Keep it. I can't hang on to a $250 check. I know your heart was in the right place, Mr. Newberg, but it's not going to help us find your son's murder any quicker. It's Newquist, and it's daughter this time. Keep it. You never know when you can use it. Your drink this, Lieutenant. You'll feel better. Carol, are you giving money away again? You know, Lieutenant, every time we pass a policeman, he hands him $5. Well, I want the boys on the beach to know that someone still has faith in them. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, it wasn't like this six months ago, was I? Wasn't I a lot more self-confident, huh? Jesus Christ, the way I used to walk in on the scene of a crime like I owned the goddamn world. Can I have a little scotch in that milk, please? Oh, sure. A piece of cheese in that cookie? Oh, oh, sure. It's gonna be a shake-up, you know. When there's 345 murders and none of them solved, somebody's gonna be like the poor guy. Thanks, how about a piece of ice like a good fella? Somewhere there's a logical pattern of this whole business. There has to be. I didn't ask for butter on that cookie. Oh. Just cheese. Thank you. And those goddamn vigilante groups. Black against white. White against black. Whatever became of human dignity? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Only one piece of ice. Let's get a ride, huh? <laughs> what kind of cheese is that? Sharp cheddar? You should not be allowed with my stomach. I can't take sharp cheddar. God damn it, will you shape up? Sooner or later, there's a pattern. Sooner or later, everything falls into place. I believe that. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't want to wake up tomorrow morning and see the sunrise. God damn it, is this what I asked for? I want some cooperation! Every crime has its own pattern of logic. Everything has an order. If we cannot find that order, it's not because it doesn't exist, but because we have incorrectly <laughs> examined some vital piece of evidence. Let us examine the evidence. Number one, in the past six months, there have been 345 homicides committed in this city. The victims have ranged variously in age, sex, social status, and, and color. Number two, in none of these homicides have we been able to find a motive. Number three, consequently, all 345 homicides remain unsolved. So much for the evidence. A subtle pattern begins to emerge. What is this pattern? What is it that these 345 homicides have, 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 have in common? They, they have in common three things. A, they have nothing in common. B, they have no motive. And C, they remain unsolved. <laughs> now, when a case does not gel, it is often not because we lack the necessary facts, but because we've observed those facts incorrectly. Following normal routine, we looked for a cause. Had we looked for effect, we would have found our answer that much sooner. What is the effect of 345 unsolved homicides? The effect is... <laughs> lack of faith in law enforcement personnel. <laughs> that is our motive. The pattern is complete. We are involved here in a far-reaching <laughs> conspiracy to undermine our most basic beliefs and sacred institutions. Who is behind this conspiracy? Once again, ask the question, who has the most to gain? People in high places, their names would astound you. People in low places, concealing their, their activities beneath a cloak of poverty. People in all walks of life, left wing and right wing, black and white, students and scholars, a conspiracy of such ominous proportion that we will never, never know the whole story and will never be able to reveal all the facts. <clears throat> we are readying mass arrests. 
I'm going to see that you people get every possible break. If there's any information you would like to contribute this time, it will be held in comfort. I strongly advise against any of you trying to leave town. What's left? What's there left? I'm a reasonable man. Just explain to me. What have I left to believe in? Oh, I swear to God, the tide is rising. $250. Give me, give me, give me. We need honest cops. People just aren't being protected anymore. We need a revival of honor and trust. We need the army. We need a giant fence around every block of the city, an electronically charged fence, and anyone who wants to leave the block has to get a pass, and a haircut, and can't talk with a filthy mouth. We need respect for a bad reputation. TV cameras, that's what we need, TV cameras, in every building lobby, in every elevator, in every apartment, in every room. Public servants who are public servants. And if they catch you doing anything funny to yourself or anyone, they break the door down and beat the shit out of you. A return to common sense. We have to have lobotomies for anyone who earns less than 10,000 a year. I don't like it, but it's an emergency. Outside these weapons, too. Is it fair that their side has all the weapons? We have to protect ourselves and steal ourselves. It's freedom I'm talking about, God damn it. Freedom! There, there's a fox loose in the chicken coop. Kill him! Kill him! I want my freedom. Ah, oh, you gotta get me my freedom! Oh, 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 oh.
Aren't they beautiful? Look, Carol, they're flowers. When I was 12 and a half, my mother and father used to cart the whole pack of us out to the country and we would picnic near the flowers. There were so many more flowers in those days. We'd pick every last one, bring them all back to the city. No one else does the cleaning up around here except me. Use it. What do I want to use it for? I've only been in analysis four months. I never used one of these in my life. Neither have I. Well, why'd you get it? It was on sale. <laughs> Why don't you load it? Don't know how. Hey, you know, the Army rejected me four times. The fifth time, they said if I came around again, they had me arrested. Nomenclature. Trigger housing group to load. Hold the weapon by the forearm of the stock with the left hand. Open the bolt with the right hand, insert up to five cartridges into the receiver of the magazine. Kenny. I said you got Lieutenant Practice! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Oh, 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 oh,
Family laughing again. You know, for a while there, I was really worried. 